Today I'm going to talk about the changes in the conservation and restoration of archaeological ceramics over time. We'll start with a short introduction to conservation and restoration. The terms conservation and restoration are often used interchangeably, but the approaches and end goals are different. The focus of conservation is the stabilization and preservation of historical objects using preventative measures to stop ongoing or future deterioration of the object or any of its parts. This is done through methods and with materials that will not have an adverse effect on the object's original materials based on the best available knowledge. The focus of restoration is the return of the historical object to its original state, and this view of restoration can override preservation concerns and can actually cause damage if conservation measures are not taken. Usually a combined approach is best. Here, B.R. Howard gives us a handy visual for the difference between conservation and restoration. Now let's quickly go over the development of conservation and restoration over time. Early in the history of ceramics, repair was not really seen as worth the effort for small fills. However, we do see evidence of pottery repairs dating back as early as 5000 BCE. This takes the form of clamps, staples, bolts, and fills made from animal hide or the tar-like bitumen. In the photo on the right of a Greek amphora from Carol Snow's article, you can see drill holes they found during disassembly. In Japanese pottery, we see the aesthetically pleasing kintsugi repairs filling breaks and loss with gold. These types of early repairs are considered part of the historical repairs as they were contemporary to the original usage of the object. When trying to reverse previous restoration attempts, these ancient repairs would be left as much as possible. In the 18th and 19th centuries, many excavations of Greek pottery were carried out. This is when many of the more modern restorations started. Many objects were repaired on site before their arrival at historical in institutions, thus much of the knowledge on these repair efforts were determined by working backward, testing the object and removing the previous fills, paint, and adhesives. Often a signature and date was found on the interior of the replacement pieces. During this period, to meet the demand for ancient pottery, restorers intended to restore the ceramics to their original appearance with no evidence of their fills. During the 20th century, ceramic restoration developed as a serious discipline, and in the 1960s, there was a boom of how-to manuals. Around this time, reversibility started to be a standard, and the stronger adhesives and fill materials began to become less acceptable in the 21st century. Shellac and plaster fell out of use, and polyresins, calcium sulfates, and modeling putties became common. These materials support the stability of the object and are reversible. There are a few things that need to be taken into consideration when looking at conservation and restoration treatments of archaeological ceramics. So what does a restorer need to consider before attempting any changes to a ceramic object? What are their original materials and how will they interact with materials used for cleaning, adhesives, and fills? What previous attempts at restoration have been made? Should they be removed? Can they be removed without damaging the original materials? Will their repair contribute to the longevity of the item? Are the materials used easily reversible or will they damage the original materials in the future? Are they trying to repair the item in, to such an extent that repairs would be undetectable and a viewer would think the current appearance is the same as the original appearance of the item with no history of damage? Let's take a look at some of the ways that objects were tested and repaired in the past and then we'll compare them to the current standards. Restorations of the past were focused on making the ceramic object look brand new. Repairs were disguised and painted details were matched to look like the original. In the late Victorian and early Edwardian period, censorship of the original design came into play, covering up the somewhat sexual designs of the original artists. Some of the materials used for repairing ceramic were gold, shellac, and plaster. The gold fills in broken Japanese pottery were prevalent in historic ceramics as far back as the 1500s and are considered part of the cultural history of the object. The same can be said for metal staples used in Greek antiquity to repair cracks. Shellac is a type of resin made from lac bug secretions and was used to repair cracks or breaks in ceramics. Even more recently, plaster was used as a fill material as well. In addition to the materials changing over time, the way the objects are analyzed has changed as well. In the past, most common testing method was to take a sample of the original object to run mechanical and chemical tests to determine a variety of things like age and the material characteristics. In line with the definition of conservation from earlier, 
Restoration efforts in the past were done to the standards that were the best of their knowledge at the time. However, we have since learned that many past restoration methods can and have caused significant damage to the objects they believed they were repairing and preserving. One of the biggest issues with most adhesive and fill materials is that they're too strong to easily be reversed and removed without significantly damaging the original materials. Shellac is one of the strongest and often removal attempts have caused additional breakage of the ceramic. Plaster has also caused significant damage. It can introduce salts to and pull off bits of the ceramic. Harsh chemicals and ionized water can negatively react with the original materials of the object causing pigments and details to be lost, and deposits of residual salts from washing can cause corrosion over time. Invasive testing methods have lessened over time as technology has further developed. With these new methods, sampling of the original materials for typing and analysis is not needed as often, and the introduction of harsh chemicals to the object for testing and cleaning is less likely to happen. While aesthetic qualities of historic artwork and objects is important to the understanding of ancient cultures, Conservation of the object should be prioritized. A restorer should not be adding their own work to be indistinguishable from the original work. This is deceitful and sometimes closer to fraud than true conservation and restoration. The focus should be on maintaining the integrity of the object and ensuring its stability and longevity while minimizing damage. Now that we've talked about past conservation and restoration efforts and how they fall short based on more current knowledge, let's take a look at the current standards. Having conservation and preservation standards in mind when dealing with historical ceramic is very important, especially for restorers. Reversibility is the main tenet of current restoration practices. Restorations done now should not damage the original materials and should be easily removable in the future as new technology develops and standards change. This includes making sure that materials used for fills will not react negatively with the materials of the original and testing in less invasive ways that are not destructive to the original materials, like x-ray microscopy, fiber optics reflectance spectroscopy, and chromatography. The objects should be properly stored and handled to prevent further damage and deterioration from temperature, humidity, light, pests, and particles. All modern repairs should be obvious. If the large section of the ceramic must be filled, a person looking at it closely should be able to tell that the repaired section is not original. This includes not in painting details to hide the fills. This is known as the six foot six inch rule where repairs will not be obvious on the display from a distance, but will be apparent up close. We've looked at the history of conservation and restoration, past methods and their flaws and the current standards. So what have we learned? Fixing ceramic pottery has been around since the pottery itself has existed, just as fixing items for usefulness has always existed. We saw this with the amphora discussed by Snow, where they discovered ancient repairs through the evidence of drilled holes and metal staples. Restoration then had a focus on aesthetics. Restorers did fix the broken parts, but then they covered up the fixes to make it look new again. In between these two methods was kintsugi, which was aesthetically pleasing but still made repairs visible and became part of the history of the object. As new technology developed, restoration began to remove previous modern restoration work to try and reveal the original materials and repairs. This led to concerns over the effects of rest restoration materials and testing techniques. The new standards of restoration developed with an emphasis on conservation considerations. All repairs should be made with materials that are reversible without damage to the original materials, and these repairs should not be hidden from the human eye. Here are some of the resources used for this presentation. Thank you for watching.